Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to already our 11th season of Chemical TV's News Bulletins. We're all very happy that we can meet live in San Francisco and share news and information from Chemical the Americas 2023 with you. Also in this series of CCTV's News Bulletins, you can expect interviews with authority and industry experts, and today they share their plural perspectives on state regulations. As of tomorrow, sound bites from the sessions, every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day, and also in San Francisco, we like to spice up Chemcon TV's news bulletins with a knowledgeable and passionate local reporter. I thought a great place to search for a passionate reporter is the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood, the place of the Summer of Love, a cultural phenomenon that took place in San Francisco in 1967, during which thousands of young people experienced and experimented in a pharmaceutically enhanced Summer of Love, leading up to a cultural revolution which had a lasting impact on the city and the world. A hidden treasure in today's Haight-Ashbury neighborhood is the Church of Eight Wheels, a roller skating church that offers a unique and offbeat experience for both roller skating fanatics and those seeking a one-of-a-kind cultural destination. In 2013, this former church transformed into a roller skating ring and is now a non-profit organization that helps and supports the local community. Hi there, you're live on TV! We are looking for someone to show the secrets of San Francisco. We have three fortune cookies and the one that draws San Francisco cookie will be fortunate and become our local reporter in San Francisco. Do you accept this challenge? One, two, three. All right, ladies first. The Whitney City, Chicago. Ah. Uh. Uh, the rainy city, Seattle. City of Fog, San Francisco. You know, our city's famous fog, named Carl, is actually our unofficial mascot in this city. Carl the Fog is a beloved and quirky meteorological phenomenon here, which also creates a low-lying cloud and mist, which gives the city a kind of mystical and mysterious atmosphere. Congratulations, I already see that you're knowledgeable and passionate. Are you in for an adventure? And uh, by the way, what is your name? Sure, I'm always up for an adventure. My name is Pierre. Welcome, Pierre. For every report, we will give you a fortune cookie that cryptically describes where to go next. Those who find wisdom are fortunate. The package states... Look for it in a place of comfort, love and peace. What is it that I, a cookie, describe with so much ease? Think about it. When you place it in the right perspective, I'm sure you will manage. For now, we will zoom out and take a look at California and other state perspectives on chemical control legislation in our first interview of the week. Please watch the highlights of the interview I had with Meredith Williams and Christopher Finarelli. We have learned over the t course of time, again, I go back to these, these sim similar ideas, transparency and accountability. We have an obligation as a regulator to hold entities accountable to conforming to the law and to keeping uh, the public safe. We, we support and we nurture transparency whenever we can, whether that's by sharing information uh, that we gather as we do our work, or whether that's by sub, you know, supporting some of the things that are happening through the legislature with our expertise and what we've learned. So the transparency, I think, has a lot of, of value. One of the most important things I think we can do moving forward is be very mindful of the inter interagency dependencies and how to use these regulatory or different regulatory authorities. And I think that's an important piece moving forward. Many of our companies look to third parties like Safer Choice uh, to differentiate themselves in the market. And so that's an important tool for moving um, the industry towards sustainable um, products. You know, you look at um, uh, recently, they've done some work uh, through this program with antimicrobials and identifying products that meet certain specific standards as it relates to the environment, human health, um, product integrity. And, um, it, and it, this, this allows consumers to make um, smart choices about um, when they're uh, looking at products on the market. 
The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel, or just press the CCTV button in our Camp Connect app. And for those fortunate to be in San Francisco, on the mega screen in our conference room. Which brings me to our local reporter. Pierre, I see that you found the place that was home for a fortune cookie. Hi Tiered. Yes, I'm in the fortunate position to visit the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory. A musty location in San Francisco's Chinatown with awesome tasty treats. Would you like to try? Very tasty indeed. Please tell us more about this unique factory and its crispy cookies. I'd love to tell you more about the fortune cookies. A treat widely associated with Chinese cuisine, but in reality with roots firmly planted right here in San Francisco. But if the fortune cookies didn't originate in China, where did they come from? I'm here with Kevin Chan, owner of the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory, to tell us more. So basically, fortune cookie is an American invention by the Japanese, but the Chinese were perfected. We, we, we've been making cookies since August 5th, 1962. Now here's my mother still working now. And she's the one that starts very early in the morning, makes the batter. She's, she, she's the one who has the, the recipe that no one knows. Mm, I see. Can you tell us more about how exactly these fortune cookies are made? You see the flour come, come out from the copper tube, from the copper tube, and goes around and takes it four and a half minutes. It come out, the cookie is very hot and soft, so we can apply and bend it. Fascinating. Nice, huh? Wow. And then the Japanese make the cookies inside with no fortunes. So after the cookies dry and cool, they tuck the paper in like that. The fortunes inside, the Japanese fortune outside, there could be far off, no fortunes, or could be another fortunes to substitute. I'm curious, are they quite hot when you peel them off the oven? Well, you're about to find out. How many can you do in a minute? One, if I'm lucky. Well, you should do more than that. <laughs> okay. I can see you can do it. I'd love to try. Okay, I'd... watch first. Okay. Get the fortune, peel the cookie off, and put the paper in the middle, and then tuck it in. Like that. Wow. You got it? Okay, I see. Well, let's see. Beautiful. And... Wow, that's They're nice. quite hot indeed. I, I'm sure your team is more used to making these cookies, baking over four million in one year. One word of warning though, besides that they're very hot, Cracking open a fortune cookie will never be the same. Once you visit the fortune cookie factory, you'll always remember the spirit of good luck and fortune that is embodied in these delicious treats, a true San Francisco invention. Kevin and Pierre, thanks for this tasty tale. Pierre, looking forward to seeing you at tonight's welcome reception. And Kevin, could you please give him the special cookie with the description of the location of tonight's event? Are you ready for the big one? Absolutely. The big event? Yes. The big fortune? <laughs> yes. Okay. There you go. Wow. <laughs> That's a big one. Quite the cookie. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's inside. Another cookie. <laughs> Every man is the architect of his own fortune. So find a secret place where you deposit your wealth to ensure your future and financial health. In the meantime, we go to the statement of the day. With today, all the way from Argentina, Sofia Lobo, co-chair of the Latin America Regulatory Corporation Forum. Sofia, welcome. Thank you very much, Third, I'm very happy to be here and to be sharing the rest of the week with all the fellow colleagues from around the world. Perfect. Uh, Sofia, at Chemco the Americas 2020, um, the Latin America Regulatory Corporation Forum was in full motion. Did COVID slow that pace or...? Well, during COVID, we had the virtual working group still going on and very active. So I think that kept us going in, in a very uh, full speed also. But to be honest, since 2020 to now, we have achieved a lot. We did our third annual meeting in uh, Bogota, Colombia last December, where we um, defined our new governance document. 
Uh, we also did only last year 10 webinars and we are hoping to do well, we are working on and preparing four new webinars for this year. Also, the virtual working group uh, work on uh, the guidelines on uh, prioritization, uh, risk uh, assessment. So we have already done three guides and the virtual working group is working in the fourth one. And um, well, we have new communication tools. You can follow us on LinkedIn and also we have our newsletters that we hope everyone gets. And uh, well, we are, we are very active, honestly. Um, I can keep on going. I'm trying to, to remember, but uh, yeah, to be honest, we have been full speed still. I'm happy that everything went virtual, but I'm more an in-person person, so I'm happy that you're here. What is your statement of the day? Well, our uh, industry and government should keep a fluent dialogue towards regulatory cooperation. Thank you very much, Sophia. Now it's time for the forecast of the day. This morning we will start with a workshop on global supply chain through the regulatory lens, where we focus on the EU Sustainable Product Initiative and global nanomaterials and rose regulations, followed by a seminar on California and other state perspectives on chemical control legislation. Besides California, we take a deep dive into Massachusetts, Washington, New York and Maine. And we look at the impact of state legislation on the electronics industry and consumer product sectors. In the afternoon, a seminar on Latin America and GHS in the Americas, where we go all across the region and learn about regulatory developments in, among others, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia and Mexico, before looking at GHS implementation in Latin America, the amendments of the Canadian hazard product regulations and updates on hazard communication standards in the USA. Thank you for watching and for those here in San Francisco, looking forward to seeing you at tonight's welcome reception.